Nelson Peltz is out with a manifesto for change over at Disney. Here it is. It's a 133-page white paper entitled Restore the Magic at the Walt Disney Company. It was released on Monday, and in it, Peltz's Tryon Fund Management cemented its demands for an overhaul of Disney's board, as well as a recasting of its business strategy. Bloomberg's Chris Palmieri has more from L.A. So, Chris, a lot of demands here, some of them familiar, including adding Nelson Peltz and the former Disney CFO, Jay Rasulo, to the board, along with coming up and putting in place a succession plan uh, to Bob Iger. And of course, this is something that investors have been calling for for a while, along with some other things like cutting costs and clarifying a digital strategy. This is all in the lead up to a very important meeting next month, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Disney's annual meeting uh, a little later than normal this year, uh, but two proxy fights, essentially, two activist investors trying to get board seats. Uh, very unusual. Uh, and. Uh, this is, a, this is a big one. I mean, Nelson Peltz obviously has a track record of uh, doing these things. Uh, whether he's successful this time, uh, we'll see next month. I mean, how much can we put, uh, how much stock can we put in that track record, Chris? I mean, I went through this report here, and it reads like a list of grievances. When I go back to other reports that I've seen from other activist investors, including Starboard and a few others, you have these lengthy reports, but a good chunk of those reports are about the solutions. What are the solutions other than putting him and Jay on the board? Right. Yeah, I, I also read 133 pages. Not a whole lot of specifics in terms of what Nelson and Jay Brazillo would do differently. A couple of minor things. He said that uh, he thinks they should find a partner for their traditional TV networks, you know, ABC, and, and that that's something that Bob Iger, uh, the Disney CEO, floated last year and then backtracked on. Um, there's also a recommendation in there that he, they do a better job of partnering, uh, say, for example, selling uh, ESPN Plus along with Netflix and that's that type of situation. But in terms of what specifically he do differently, no, not a lot in there. I guess this is something that everyone would wait for if he and Rasulo were named to the board. Why Disney, um, Chris? Why is Nelson Peltz focused on this company in particular? You could look at Warner Brothers Discovery, for instance, which has done even worse uh, since the stock uh, debuted in April of 2022. We know that Disney has certainly underperformed the S&P 500, but what is it about Disney that's vulnerable and therefore appealing to Peltz right now? Well, yeah, I mean, all of the big traditional media companies have gotten whacked. Uh, you know, he, Nelson does make a pretty strong case in there that Disney has underperformed in recent years, both the financial run results and the stock price performance. And uh, Disney, though, has great assets. And uh, unlike, you know, say Warner Brothers or Paramount, like you mentioned, it's not as dependent on the traditional TV business as those folks. They have a huge theme park business, for example. They've already built a very sizable 200 million or so uh, streaming customers. So those assets make Disney a little more appealing than the, you know, the general uh, media company right now.